Ooh la la. Whole engine bay is covered in mold. That's how close it is to the wall. Good morning, people of the internet. It is 3.30 a.m. and I'm on my way to Spain to do something really stupid. Two days ago, I found a car in Bilbao in Spain, a 1991 BMW 850i with a six-speed manual finished in Laguna Green Metallic over a black leather interior. Although I don't know a lot about the car, on paper it seems like a good deal, so I wanted to get there as soon as possible. Right now, I'm catching the bullet train to Stuttgart from where I'm flying to Bilbao then hopping on a bus to the city center, and then on another bus to Castro Urdiales, which is the location of the car and the seller. To explain a bit better why is this is a stupid idea, here's what I know about the car. The current owner has had the car since 2005, he didn't drive it much and left it parked in the garage a few years ago. All I have is five very old and very small pictures. At the moment the car doesn't start as the fuel pumps are bad, his mechanics started taking things apart, but then left for work abroad and the car was left sitting like that. At least that's what I was told. Only two pictures of the interior where you can see some truly awful modifications. But he did say he had the original parts, so that was a plus. The seller also said that the car was perfect in every sense when he parked it. Yeah right, and I'm a squirrel. I then asked for more current photos and ended up getting three more. Albeit still pretty useless photos, but enough to see that the car is real and exists somewhere in Spain. Using the license plates of the car, I pulled the Carfax on it. Spain is the only country in Europe that has Carfax, and the information on it is always slim, but I did get the VIN of the car and saw that the car was imported to Spain in 1998 and has been in the same city and with the seller since 2005. The coding the VIN showed me that it is in fact a Laguna Green 6-speed manual car and that it was originally a German car that was exported to Spain. That's pretty much all that I know about the car. The seller said that the car has 112,000 kilometers. I didn't bother to ask about the service history or the service book, as in 99% of the cases, they don't have it. Odds that I'll buy the car are 50-50, since I don't know really what to expect, but I am very excited as I love going on these road trips across Europe and hunt down all neglected BMWs. I just landed in Bilbao. Bienvenido en Español. Here's my ride to the city center. Oh, and to make things just a bit more spicier, I don't speak any Spanish and the seller doesn't speak English. Alright, I just boarded the bus for Castro Urdiales. Should be there in about 45 minutes, something like that. I generally hate riding on a bus, but this was a beautiful coastal ride. Alright, just arrived in Castro Urdiales. Now I have to wait for the seller to pick me up. Seller just arrived. I immediately started impressing him with my fluent Spanish skills. No, no entiendo mucho bien, pero mi español es no es muy bien, verdad? Poquito. And handing out compliments. It's bonito city. Castro Urdiales. Estoy aquí. <laughs> Muy bien. Muy bien. Right. Esto está desmontado porque yeah, el, yeah. el mecánico. Okay. Está abierto. So, do we push? Está en punto muerto, pero no yeah. va. Yeah, yeah. Está frenado. Uh, no? He was telling me we couldn't push it out because the brakes were stuck. I didn't try hard enough, but that later turned out not to be the case as they were able to push it out when the truck came to pick up the car. Tires just needed more air. Oh, scheisse. God. 
The condition was a bit worse than I expected. The clutch pedal sinks to the floor, there is a puddle of oil under the car, both batteries are also missing, hole in the driver's seat letter, and so on. I'll get into the details in a bit. Uh, ¿Batería no tienes? No, la tiene mecánico. Se la llevó el mecánico, las baterías y las bombas. And here's me failing to explain that the engine is covered in mold and is hazardous. Now that I think about it, it's probably mildew, but nonetheless, pretty nasty stuff. Mold. <laughs> mold. Ah, uh, no tienes en español here, aquí. Mold. 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 The I don't, I don't know how it's, it's in español. H hazard here. M mold. Humedad. Yeah, mold. Mold. <laughs> Un momento. Molde. 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 Espera, que le llamaban eso. No entiendo. That went spectacularly well. Anyway, they told him the mechanic got the car running for a few seconds not long ago. Although probably not smart, I was hoping to hear the engine turning over. His van couldn't enter the garage to try and jump start it, so we needed to get batteries. Then I tried to explain in plain words that I wanted to hear the engine cranking to their daughter. English? My daughter. Okay. A little English. Okay, that's good. A ver, háblale, Vane. Hi, you speak English? Mm, more or less. More or less, okay. <laughs> so I'm trying to ask your father if it's possible to get uh, a pair of batteries to put it on the car so I can just hear the engine turning over, if you understand what I mean. <laughs> no, no, Arancaro, no, Arancaro. Only to hear the engine when you uh, turn the key. I just need to hear that the engine wants to start. It doesn't need to start, just wants to start. Vale, eh, con baterías se puede arrancar. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Con baterías. Con baterías, yeah. yeah. Vamos y compramos. <laughs> Aquí. Batería. La que tú quieras. Ah, cables. Muy bien. Luz. Aquí. I can't recall why, but we ended up getting only one battery, which is not enough to spin this big lump of an engine. In any case, one battery was also useful as I was able to power up the car, read the odometer and just make sure that electronics are working. Then I looked over the documents and decided to go for lunch and let everything sink in. So I'm back for the third time. I just agreed on the price with the seller and I bought the car. Uh, I don't know if this is a smart decision or not. The whole engine bay is covered in mold. All leaks all over the place. The bell doesn't look good. There's oil under the car. Really nice rims. The interior isn't very good either. There's a hole in the seat right here. The steering wheel is absolutely hideous. There's some gauges here that are disgusting. The shift knob is not original. The handbrake lever is not original. The headliner is still in one place, surprisingly. The clutch goes all the way to the floor when you press it. So hydraulics are f***ed. Unfortunately, he cannot find the original steering wheel, which really sucks. No batteries. I didn't find any major rust apart one on the roof. This is really typical for the 8 series. A bit of rust on the sunroof here. The fuel pumps are removed. The mechanic started replacing them, but never got around to finish it. He moved apparently or something, and the shitty thing is that he actually has the whole fuel pump assembly with him, and the guy's not responding. So that's not good. I have no idea how this car is going to come out, because look at that. That's how close it is to the wall. I don't know, it's worth the shot at this point. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do the full restoration on this car. I'm just gonna kind of revive it, get it going so it starts and stops, and then 
probably give it to someone else to finish the restoration of this car because it's going to take a lot of work. And with that, we headed to the agency to sort out the paperwork. So I just spent about two hours in Hasteria, Gasteria, or whatever you call it. It's the agency uh, here in Spain. And it took about an hour and a half to figure out how to do all of the documentation because I need something that's called Baja por Exportación for the car. And the car already had a temporarily an old registration here in Spain because the, car didn't, uh, the guy didn't drive the car. So now they needed to do the one for export. So luckily I have a really good friend of mine in Spain here who speaks Spanish and English. So he was able to talk to them over the phone and uh, figure out how to do everything. So I ended up paying for the car and papers. They're gonna mail me the documents and the car should be picked up in a couple of weeks or so, as soon as I find the transport. But for now, I'm gonna have a really nice dinner, get some cerveza, tapas, and enjoy this beautiful city. Another successful car buying road trip. I love doing these. So now this is my first video that I created when I'm traveling and buying a car, but I've actually done this more than a few times and every time I'm super excited about doing this. Every time it's an amazing experience because you get to meet so many different people, so many different sellers. Sometimes they're crazy, batshit crazy. I had that happening in Italy actually, sellers of my M5. Sometimes they're really nice people and the sellers today, uh, it was a guy and a wife and his wife and a small dog. They were like super, super nice people. And I'm really glad that I made a deal with them today. And they were happy with the price. I was happy with the price, so it kind of worked out. We'll see about the car. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be as good as I'm expecting it to be, but it's gonna be a bit of a challenge to restore it since I actually don't have a lot of time to spend working on it. And restoring a car like that that's been sitting for, uh, let's say 10 years, probably 10 years because the registration was annulled in 2011, so and last inspection was in 2009, so I'm gonna say 10 years. And restoration of that car is a full-time job, like really, really full-time job. You have to dedicate all of your time working on the car to get everything back together, and that car would need so much work that it will take me probably a year to restore it. Also, just a few months back, I finished a nine months long restoration of another E31, which went from this to this. And that car was in better condition than this one. I spent the night in Castro Diales and next morning headed to explore Bilbao before my flight back home. Here's a little montage of the beautiful city of Bilbao. And with that short tour over, it was time to go home. Spain was as always amazing, great food, incredibly nice and friendly people, and I can't wait to go back. All right, she's here. But this car left Germany back in 1998, and here we are 2019, and she's back home in a poor state, in a very, very sad state. I didn't even see this side of the car, to be honest. It was so close to the wall that I couldn't see anything. Ah, uh, yeah, that's painted. Yeah, that's the spare wheel. Ah, damn. I didn't see this. How the f is this broken? That is a really, really nice car. This used to be a competitor against E39 M3. No, E30 M3, sorry. 
Still didn't have my morning coffee. Oh my God. You know what? I wasn't planning on doing any work, but I cannot stand looking at that stupid steering wheel. So I have this steering wheel in my garage. This is what originally would have come in this car. This type of steering wheel without the airbag. Because this car does not... This car doesn't have airbags. This steering wheel is a bit worn, as you can see here. But I really don't care, because this is originally looks good for this car. I like that crap. That's much better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video where we begin to revive this forgotten legend.